The frog bit, once it takes over an area, it not only um, forms a mat along the surface, which blocks sunlight to any uh, aquatic plants, what we call submerged aquatic vegetation, or SAV, blocks all the light for those, but it also grows such a dense set of roots in it that are just all floating that you end up with this completely choked this column yeah. of water with nothing but frog bit in it. In the 1980s is when it first came to uh, America. It was already escaped the gardens yeah. and had already started spreading throughout uh, Canada before that. When it came in, it pretty much hit around northern Michigan, Lake St. Clair, and the Detroit River. And it kind of just kind of hung there for a while. And now all of a sudden we're starting to find it on the south shores of Lake Erie. In some of the inland lakes, they've had to mechanically remove it because people can't even boat anymore in the areas where it exists. So it has the potential to get very, very nasty if we don't start doing something about it. The difference between a, a small lily pad and frog bit is that a lily pad will have a Pac-Man shape, you know, a nice abrupt kind of mouth opening on it. Frog bit will be rounded and it'll be a little bit more kind of heart shaped at the rounded points, okay? Frog bit's also purple underneath, so when you go to pull it out, you'll notice kind of the stems and, and right. the underside of the leaf will be a little bit purple. And right now it's flowering, so you'll see a little white, about the size of maybe like a, a nickel, um, and it'll have three nice rounded white petals on it. And um, essentially this plant doesn't really root, it just kind of free floats everywhere. So where we find frog bit, is where the water has pushed it. So it kind of will get stuck up against the shore and vegetation or a downed tree is where we'll find it the most. It's probably moved around here not only because of water currents, but it's also what we call an aquatic hitchhiker. So it's very likely that this uh, portions of this plant or seeds got stuck on people's boats, whether you're an actual power boat, whether you're a sailboat, whether you're a paddle boat, um, any one of those types of vessels could have been transporting this around the Great Lakes. And practice washing your boat off um, when you're going from one place to another. That's always a very, very good practice. It helps to stop aquatic invasive species. I hope that you guys will just become very, very in tune of being able to identify it. And anytime you're out paddling anywhere, maybe you help kind of pull some of that stuff out. And All right.